Welcome to this week's Ask Ralph and Lonnie, where we answer your natural health questions. This week's topic is fibromyalgia. We've had a lot of questions about this topic because the weather has been changing and when the weather gets a little cooler, the symptoms usually get a lot worse. And fibromyalgia sometimes includes other components known as chronic fatigue and chronic pain. So uh, it's important to understand that fibromyalgia is not a disease. You can't do tests and find a frank pathogen or something wrong with a particular organ or system, but rather it's classified as a syndrome, which is a collection of symptoms that are not always present together, but enough of them are to put them together and call them a syndrome. Other conditions are classified as syndromes as well, things like ADD, ADHD, um, autism. They're all syndromes where not each person doesn't have every single symptom, but there's enough of commonality of symptoms to call it a syndrome. And the way that conventional medicine looks at these syndromes is to treat them palliatively. That is to say, they give you, if there's a pain component, they give you something for pain. If there's a nervous component, they give you something for your nerves. If there's a sleep component, they give you something for sleep. And that last one is really pretty important because what we have found and what some studies have begun to show is that many times for people who have this syndrome, it was preceded by a period of time where they were not able to get a good night's sleep for an extended period of time. So in other words, they had a stressful situation, whether it was an injury, an illness, the loss of a person close to them, stresses in their job, financial difficulties, anything that keeps you from getting a good night's sleep for an extended period of time. The reason sleep is so important is that the body rebuilds during this critical period of deep level sleep. And if you can't get to the deep level sleep, your body can't rebuild. Now, why don't people sleep? Right now, if you watch television and you count it up in the course of the day, the number of drug commercials for sleeping, you'd, you'd be amazed by how much money is being spent trying to sell products to people so that they can sleep. Well, the reasons are actually ergonomic. In some ways, we might say they're feng shui. Because a lot of it comes down to light. You see, inside your brain, you have the pineal gland. The pineal gland manufactures melatonin. Melatonin controls that sleep cycle, among other things. It's also a very powerful antioxidant for the brain. Well, if there's too much light in the room, and it doesn't take much, the pineal gland doesn't think it's dark. And so it doesn't know when to manufacture melatonin. And so the whole body's cycles get out of, uh, out of sync. You know, it just loses its sense of rhythm. Now, how much is too much light? Go into your bedroom, turn off the lights, and look around and see how many of those little LEDs you see on the front of the, the television, if you, if you have a DVD machine, uh, on the clock radio. On, how many electromagnetic sources do you have around your body that are just glowing? What if you have a lot of mirrors? Maybe you have a wall full of mirrors on your closet. Now you're doubling the light. Our bodies were designed to sleep in darkness. The only light it's expecting is basically the lunations, you know, the cycles of the moon. All these natural sources that don't change confuse our body and disrupt our sleep. And this is one of the big reasons behind the sleep problems that later on lead to fibromyalgia, chronic fatigue, and many, many other problems. Those first two hours after you go to sleep is, are critical for your body to rebuild, especially protein. If you're having a problem with weight, a lot of times it's an issue of not being able to fall asleep in that period of time. So go around, put you know, window darkening shades up. If you have mirrors in the bedroom, maybe you move them someplace else. If you have a clock radio next to the head of your bed, 
Just chuck that out the window. You've heard us say that before and go buy a battery operated one. That's a DC current and keep it at a distance away from you as well. You know, don't sleep with your head right up against an electrical socket. Your pineal gland can read those electromagnetic fields and it recognizes that as light and it disrupts the field. So those are things you really want to do. If you have a problem with sleeping, you know, every little noise goes off, maybe you get a sound machine just to remove those disturbing sounds. But the most important thing is that you get a good night's sleep. Now, in an ideal world, you'll retrain your body to make your own melatonin. But sometimes it's helpful to supplement with some melatonin. And this is where a lot of people go really, really wrong because there's a trick to using melatonin as a supplement properly. The first time that you use it, it works great. The second time you work, use it, it works okay. The third time you use it, it works a little bit. And by the fourth time you use it, it doesn't work at all. This is because your body ideally wants to just be trained to make its own melatonin. And although you think you're not making any melatonin, you're probably making at least a little bit. And so when you supplement with melatonin, the body has so many other things it can do that it says, well, if you're gonna just hand me this melatonin, I'm gonna put my efforts in something else and doesn't even try to make any more melatonin. So you end up making the problem worse instead of making it better. So if you wanna use a short-term supplementation program for melatonin, you use it one night, you skip the next night, you maybe use it again and then maybe skip two nights. And if you still need help trying to fall asleep on the nights that you're not using the melatonin, you might wanna use something like 5-HTP, which is a precursor to L-tryptophan, the amino acid that has a long history of helping people sleep. Or there's another uh, product that you might wanna use and that's called GABA especially if you have a problem turning off that tape in your head that keeps driving you crazy. You know, if the stress that led to your fibromyalgia in the first place was you, you know, reliving that hectic day at work, you find yourself reliving it while you're trying to fall asleep, GABA is perfect for that. Uh, we have a formulation of GABA that we like to use that actually also has some L-taurine in it, which is a very calming amino acid as well, and it just helps you to fall asleep. And then you can use the melatonin when you need it for jet lag or adjusting your time schedule, and then it works very well. One of the most important things when you're dealing with inflammation and pain is oil, aka fat, aka lipids. These are essential nutrients to the body, and this is why. Every single cell in the body is coated with a layer of fat a lipid wall, and it does several different things. One thing that it does is protect the outer wall from damage. It does this in part because it slides. In other words, all these cells are, are crammed together like people jammed into a subway train at rush hour. And all these cells have the slick outer wall so that they can slide against each other without you know, abrading each other's shells. Well, if the body gets low in these essential fatty acids, these high quality lipids, what happens is the cells start you know, getting friction and they start getting abrading, they start getting damaged. When a cell becomes damaged, the immune system, the white blood cells have to go rushing out of the lymphatic system, grab hold of those um, damaged cells and drag them out of the body, right? When that happens all the time because the body doesn't have enough lipid, doesn't have enough fat, high quality fat, that's what's called an autoimmune response. So you hear about all these different autoimmune diseases. What it means is that the body's immune system is working too much. It's actually seems to be damaging the body. It's happening because the body's low in fats. And actually before 1972, these autoimmune problems were very, very rare. And that's because it was in 1972 that food manufacturers first introduced no fat, low fat foods. It was at the time when the model Twiggy showed up who you know, looked like a boy and was incredibly skinny and had no fat on her body and everyone wanted to look like that so they stopped eating fat. All these problems commenced at that time. Now there's different kinds of fats. 
The fats you find in fish and cold water fish are especially good. Those are the omega-3 oils. The omega-3 oils come from cold water fish like salmon, cod. They're extremely good for the system. You also find them in lean meats. Very, very good for you as well. Now, what don't you find? Okay, you don't find the type of oils that are found in plants. And actually, many plants, like grains, they have oils as well, but they're primarily the omega-6s, and these can be quite inflammatory. Now, when people are supplementing with oils, they're usually using fish oils. Now, you want to make sure you get very, very high quality. Why? Because fish swim in the sea, and we have been using the sea like, you know, a garbage dump for years, and there's a lot of heavy metals about it, and certain fish are more inclined to pick up heavy metals, especially mercury. You want to make sure you're dealing with a company that tests all their essential fatty acids, all these oils, for metal, so you're not getting, you know, a bottle full of heavy metals when you buy them. That's very, very important. Heavy metals are very bad for you. you go after your nervous system. What people also supplement with are sometimes the, what's called the omega, um, the GLAs, which are part of, a, part of the fats. The GLAs actually come from plants, but they come from very specific plants. They come from borage, they come from primrose, uh, they come from flax. These are very, very good oils to supplement with. They're very good for the skin, among other things. They're not anti-inflammatory. A lot of people like using flax, but let me give you a little caveat about flax. Flax has a estrogenic quality to it. Now, estrogenic, estrogen is a hormone. It's a female hormone. It's the hormone that makes a woman look like a woman. can be a little mildly inflammatory, and it also makes women tend to puff up a little bit. It makes them retain moisture. It tends to promote the estrogen in their body. The anti-inflammatory hormone that women produce is progesterone. And we've talked before about our progesterone creams, about the amazing things that they do. Actually, when people are dealing with pain, one of the best things we find they can use is a progesterone cream. In fact, it's primarily for women, but I'll tell you, if I have a sore, sore shoulder that's acting up and not responding well, I'll take a little bit of Lonnie's uh, progesterone cream and put it on my shoulder, and it does wonders. I don't use a lot of it because it can interfere with a man's hormonal system, but, you know, it doesn't take much to make it feel better. So these fats are very, very important, and you need to look at them carefully. This is one of the reasons why you want to avoid the grains is because they're supplying the wrong kinds of fats. And you want to lean more on those fish, on the cold water fish, on the lean meats, on the seafood, because they're supplying the correct type of fats to reduce inflammation in the body. Now, since we're talking about foods, it's almost impossible to get to me to shut up about the paleo diet, also known as the primal diet, the original diet. This is the diet that was used by humans before the agricultural revolution. Now, since humans have been around in one form or another for about um, half a million years that we know of, this was the diet that was used by humans and evolved for humans most of the time that we've been on the planet. So it really works best. The great thing about it is it's tremendously anti-inflammatory. So it's used by athletes. It's a favorite because athletes are always beating up on their bodies and you need to repair fast. And the paleo diet is fantastic for that. What's it composed of? It's composed of lean meats. And I mean lean meats. We're not talking hot dogs here. Hot dogs are 85%, 80% fat. Lean meats fish, seafood, you can have some eggs as well. Eggs are a good form of protein. They're about 40% protein. Um, vegetables, fruit, nuts and seeds. We throw in a little coffee, a little wine, because life is short. You've got to enjoy. But they're also very good foods, both coffee and wine. They have other benefits. What does it leave out? It leaves out all of the grains. That's wheat, rye, barley, rice, oats, things like that. Every now and then, if people feel they need a little bit of grain, we'll put add a little rice in, a couple of rice crackers. The rice is the most virtuous of the grains. It, in, it leaves out all the beans, where the grains, like I said, has, have the phytates and have the gluten that interfere with the absorption. Beans interfere with enzyme function. Well, enzyme function, that's how you absorb all your foods. That's where all of your energy comes from. If the beans interfere with your enzyme function, you know, it's no friend to you. It leaves out dairy. Why? Because cow dairy especially is mostly 
sugar. And it's a gluey sugar. It's what they make um, Elmer's glue out of. And it leaves out that most, most uh, toxic of substances of sugar, all the manufactured sugar. If they introduce sugar today, uh, the FDA would require it to be by prescription. Okay? But those are primarily what they you know, leave out. And if you look at the American diet, you know, it's mostly wheat, beans, dairy, and sugar, which explains why I think one-seventh of the American economy is now sickness care. You know, lean meats, fish, seafood, vegetables, fruits, nuts, and seeds. It's amazing how many wonderful dishes you can make out of that. And it's amazing how fast you start feeling good and how fast your weight will come back down to where it's supposed to be. And remember that weight, excess weight, is one of the stressors on your body. So a significant weight gain or weight loss may want to be one of the stress triggers that started the whole syndrome in the first place. Right. I know when we started the paleo diet, within the first three days, all my arthritis disappeared, just disappeared. Um, and, and my joints were a lot more limber, and I just felt great. So, I mean, we get that report from many, many people that we encourage to go on the paleo diet. I mean, we've never heard a story of people feeling worse when they got on paleo. Right. And if, before you go on to the next step, I want to mention there is one other thing. There's a food called the deadly nightshade family. And these are very inflammatory to certain people. The reason is, is these foods come, um, they're indigenous to South America. So many times people who are European by genetics may have a problem with it. They say about 20 to 25% of people have a problem with it. And they include some very common foods, including tomatoes, potatoes, eggplant, tobacco, and peppers. You know, so your, your pizza, you know, that's a major portion of your, you know, your pizza with peppers, you know, put a little eggplant on it, you got practically the whole thing. And that's white potatoes, not sweet potatoes. Right, white potatoes. Sweet potatoes are, are a completely different thing and are pretty virtuous food. Well, that's great. And some of the supplements that you might want to use, because if your body, if you're on a diet and you're not absorbing all of the proper minerals that you need, it's no wonder that you end up with a syndrome or a class of problems that are caused by deficiencies in nutrients that would make your body stronger and better able to stand up to the stress what, no matter what that stress is. And so a lot of the minerals that you really need to help with the symptoms and to recover from something like fibromyalgia and chronic fatigue uh, all happen to start with the letter M. We already talked about melatonin, uh, but another really important one is magnesium. People don't understand how important magnesium is. We often talk about the importance of calcium for our bones, but magnesium may even be more important than calcium. In fact, the proportion of calcium to magnesium ratio changes as we get older, and we all reach a certain age where we actually need more magnesium than calcium because we're not building bone anymore, uh, unless you want to grow that other two inches. <laughs> but... Um, so magnesium is very important because it's the mineral that allows you to relax. Uh, it allows your muscles to relax. In fact, it's stored in your muscles, whereas the calcium is stored in your bones. So you can see that your need for calcium is to store it, but your need for magne magnesium is something that you want to have available to be able to use all the time. And so when you run out of magnesium, you get a stiff neck, you're sitting at your desk by the end of the day, your shoulders mm. are all the way up here at your ears, you know. You take some magnesium, it gets to relax all those muscles. And of course, muscle tightness, muscle spasm, muscle pain is part of this whole syndrome of fibromyalgia. Another important M is manganese. Manganese is very important for a lot of things in the body, but for the purposes of this discussion, we're going to talk about how important it is for connective tissue, for joints. And so manganese can give a really good effect uh, very quickly. Uh, even if people don't have fibromyalgia, if they have, uh, you know, your knee starts acting up, just pop some magnesium or manganese. You could pop the magnesium too, but <laughs> take some manganese and you can see that very quickly that pain will go away. So that's another really important one. A third M for this grouping is called malic acid. 
It's the tart feature that we find in apples, naturally. And uh, it also has a uh, component that helps with pain and muscle uh, reactions, as well as having a beneficial effect on nerves, which all of these M's really help the nerves. And a lot of times with the fibromyalgia, the nerves just get twitchy from all of the stress and you need to calm them down. So all of these are very helpful for that. We actually like a product that's called Fibralgia that contains all three of these. So it's kind of easy to take and easy to remember. It should start with an M though. That's true. And remember that thing about malic acid, it's like the old saying, you know, an apple a day keeps the doctor away. Now, in dealing with fibromyalgia, with chronic fatigue, with all of these problems, uh, it's very, very important to get your body to relax. And in this modern world, that can be very hard. After all, between uh, the work, the kids, the family, the circle of friends, which these days with social media gets bigger and bigger and bigger, the cell phones, the, all the gadgets, the iPads, people are continually distracted. And while these can be wonderful distractions, they're also very stressful on the body. The body's never being allowed to just relax, right? That's why you see so many day spas about. A day at the spa is tremendously relaxing. It's a chance for the body to really relax. And there are products you can use to help your body relax, natural products that have been around for hundreds and hundreds of years. And of course, very modern products as well. One of my favorites, and I've been using this herb for 40 years at this point, it's, it's called Kava Kava. It comes from Polynesia in a part of the world that never had an indigenous alcohol. That's interesting, isn't it? Because what they used instead was Kava Kava. It was brewed as a tea, using an enzymatic process, and it was used during ceremonies where two tribes would come together. Now realize tribes would come together and there are all these warriors and all these women and it's the potential for problems is, you know, pretty high. But everyone would drink kava and it made everyone more social. Now one of the ways it works is that it works directly on the limbic system, the lower part of the brain that controls emotions. And it relaxes the muscles. It's a tremendous muscle relaxant. What most people use and what we use, in fact, is a, a kava extract in capsule form that uh, allows you to get the true benefits from it from a relatively small amount of kava. But by allowing the lymphatic system to relax, the muscles to relax, the lymph can drain. And remember, the lymph is where a lot of the acid is trapped. And acid inside the body, excess acid, equals pain. So encouraging that lymph to drain out of the body from the muscles is a tremendous way to overcome pain as a daily strategy. Um, usually I use kava in the evening. If I've had a really difficult day, I have muscle aches, I'll take a couple of kava before bed or in the evening. It relaxes the muscles. Um, it puts you in a good mood. It makes you feel very social, which is also nice too, because let's say you're in a situation where you have people coming over and you've been in a lot of pain and you really are not feeling very social, you take a couple of kava, it re relaxes your anxiety, it makes you feel more social, and having good social interactions with other people by itself is healing. And remember, you gotta heal the soul as well as the body sometimes, and kava is, is tremendous for that. I, I just love that formula. I've used another formula for many years, which actually has about seven or eight different herbs in it, but it includes passion flower, Passion flower actually has been used for many years for ADD. It actually is native to the East Coast of the United States. It's a beautiful flower. And also has hops flower. Yes, the same hops that are used in beer. And there it's actually used for slightly different reasons, but it has a beautiful fragrance. But hops is a tremendously good muscle relaxant. It also has an additional benefit, hops. It's a very good dissolver of old hormonal material. See, sometimes people have old hormonal material trapped into their systems, and it makes it difficult for them to absorb the newly produced hormonal material. Hops is very good for dissolving that old hormonal material and opening up the receptors so your hormonal system works better. See, there's some very, very good benefits with that. Um, lobelia. 
Lobelia, we use it actually in a liquid form, in an extract form. Lobelia is a very powerful herb, a very powerful muscle relaxant. We use it primarily externally, though you can use it internally as well. And what you do is you spread it on the areas that hurt. It's a very good pain reliever, just topically, but it also, once again, gets the lymphatic system to really open up, to drain out the acids, uh, to allow the area to open up, let new circulation come into the area. That's why a good walk is so valuable, is because it makes your lymphatic system pump. The lymph you actually have more lymphatic fluid in your body than you have blood, and the lymphatic system is very responsible for removing acids from the body. But where the blood has the heart to maintain the circulation, the lymphatic system depends upon muscular contractions to move the lymphatic system around the body. So if you spend your entire day sitting in one place and you find yourself in pain, it's because your muscles haven't been pumping the lymph to carry the acid out of the tissue. Go for a walk. Go for a walk a couple of times a day. That will do wonders for helping you improve your overall level of comfort and pain relief. We hope you enjoyed this segment. And you know, we get our ideas for topics from you. So if you'd like to suggest a topic for us, please send us a message through our website, www.spaceandtime.com. You can also come on to our webinar. You'll find information on the website about that, as well as dozens and dozens of useful articles and other episodes of Ask Ralph and Lonnie. Thanks for joining us.